Hello everyone and welcome to Tools of the Trade. Uh, I am Sebastiano Poggi, I work at uh, Novoda in London and I'm a Google developer expert for Android. So before venturing into uh, the main topic, I'll, I just want to, tell, to take uh, a short trip down memory lane. So back in the day uh, of early Android days, we still we still had to, as developers, to complete applications to ship stuff because in the end, what we needed to do was to bring food home, right? But as everything, um, the, the ways of doing that have changed over time. So we had different tools. Uh, what we used to have might seem rudimentary today, uh, but it di still did the trick. Some stuff has evolved into uh, more modern and, uh, and beautiful and useful tools. Others have kind of uh, faded away, lucky enough. Actually, is there anyone in the audience that is still using Eclipse? I cannot see, no? One person, two, three, that's fine. Okay, I thought worse. <laughs> Stop using Eclipse because now you should use Android Studio. So Android Studio is, as you might know, the now official IDE for Android that Google is uh, producing and is based on uh, the excellent uh, IntelliJ uh, IDE from JetBrains. Um, there has been, the latest stable version is 1.4 uh, and uh, Android Studio 1.4 has introduced a few uh, new features that are actually quite interesting, but I'm not going to go through them now because they're out of the scope of the presentation. So now, um, I don't know if, if that ever happened to you, but I've, I've found myself thinking these quotes over and over and over and over when I was uh, doing my development. Well, not I love Eclipse, I've never done that. Rather, something more like, like that. So these are not something you should be proud of, but that happens. Uh, if your reaction has ever been something like that when you were developing because of any of those reasons or, or other, then I have good news. We can fix uh, all of them. Well, not all of them. There's one we cannot fix, which is if you still use Eclipse. Sorry, not much we can do for that. Um, but yeah, we can use XML attributes and uh, annotations in Java in our code to make our lives easier and to fix many of the annoyances that we would otherwise have. So now, quick question. Who does know about Lint? Show of hands. Few people, not enough, not enough. So Lint. Uh, is a static analysis tool that was born in 1979 for C. Um, what it does, it uh, analyzes your code at build time and checks for common mistakes. This is any lean tools, but Android has got its own specific lean tool that not only checks for code issues, but also for resources and other uh, things that are specific to the Android platform. Um, now, Lint should be part of all of your uh, CI builds. Now, you should have a CI build, and you should do uh, static analysis on your code. This is, if you're not doing it, please do it, because it will save you a lot of time and headaches and pain. This was uh, a question that I wanted to ask, because you see, now we're going to talk about the <coughs> uh, tools namespace. So the tools namespace. Uh, it's something you use in your XML, in your layouts, in your XML resources, in your application, that um, is built into the SDK and um, is also natively supported by Android Studio and still to some extent uh, by Eclipse. Um, it is, uh, you, it's composed of uh, attributes that are usually, usually, uh, safe to uh, commit under, under version control. Um, and it's got one main headline feature that I would say is worth knowing about, which is design time overrides. So what does that mean? Basically, 
uh, design time override means that you can take any attribute uh, that has the Android namespace, uh, change that namespace from Android to tools by just adding in the namespace declaration, and that attribute will never ship into production. It will only be shown in the uh, layout preview in the ID. This is useful because, for example, what you might want to have is showing some text in your, uh, some dummy text in your text views uh, in the layout preview while you're developing it, but you don't want to have that text into the application. So what you can do is simply swapping in uh, tools colon text, and then magically you will see some, some preview of the, of the text in, inside of the text view. And this is just one of the many. You can use background or any other attribute that you can think of. Now, um, tools attributes are actually not just limited to uh, design time overrides. There's actually two main categories. Uh, the first of which I like to call lint attributes. This is my own name. It's not official. Um, and the other one uh, is the design attributes. Now I'm going to focus on the lint attributes first, and this is why I asked you before about lint, because um, there's a few things that you can do with the, with the tool, uh, tool namespace. So for example, there is the ignore attribute. The ignore attribute allows you to explicitly uh, suppress a warning. It's basically the same, uh, the, the correspondent to uh, the suppress warning annotation in Java. Um, but just setting that, this is a really bad example. This is not something you should really do in your application. But if you were ever were uh, to need to suppress some, some kind of uh, lint warning, then you would use the ignore attribute and just specify the name of the lint, lint ins inspection that you want to suppress. Now, the next one, again, it's basically the same thing as the counterpart in, uh, in Java, which is the target API um, attribute. What this, what this means is what I'm, showing, what I'm writing here is meant to be uh, run on a specific platform version and newer. So in here, for example, we had the uh, elevation. This elevation would, uh, on, uh, if the uh, minimum SDK version is earlier than Lollipop, would show up in red unless you put it in uh, the v21 folder. Well, if you put if you put the target API annotation means, okay, I know this is not going to work before uh, Lollipop. I don't care. It's fine. So in this case, this would just do the trick. Next one, kind of not super useful, but is there, is the local, um, the local attribute. The local attribute um, specifies which is the locale of uh, the string resources that you're including in a, in a given file. Um, the only real use I could find for it is to disable spell checker. If you have uh, your default uh, strings to be in a language that is not English. So for me, I might have uh, an application that is uh, in Italian uh, and the, all the resources, all the string resources in the default, uh, in the default uh, values are in Italian. So the, the spell checker will light up like a Christmas tree. This way, by just adding it uh, local something else, you would say, okay, don't, don't consider those errors. Now, we have seen the, the lint attributes. Let's just quickly move to the design attributes. Uh, the first one is context. It's uh, actually, I think, the oldest attribute in the whole namespace, uh, besides the, the overrides. And uh, this used to be called activity. I think they changed it to context because it does not only apply to a layout that is used in an activity but it might be for a fragment or an include or something like that. So what this attribute does is it links your layout with uh, a specific uh, context, which means it helps the IDE looking up for an item in the, um, in the manifest and figuring out what is the theme, for example, that you're using there. Or if it's meant to be used in landscape rather than in, uh, in portrait or stuff like that. So you can see that by just adding that simple um, context, then the, the, pre the preview can show you the, the UI with the correct theme. So you don't have, for example, duplicate toolbars and stuff like that. Now, 
Uh, next one is called show in. This is actually quite interesting. Um, this means uh, probably uh, all of you, I hope, have uh, used uh, the mechanism of merge and includes. So what merge does is basically saying uh, this stuff that I'm, sh that I'm putting inside of this XML file is going to be inflated inside something else, but I don't want to create another uh, useless parent uh, view group. So the problem with this is that by default, this is shown. This is the preview is shown in an empty screen, and the the merge layout is considered to be a frame layout. Now, what you can do is, if you have a corresponding include in another layout, you can say show in, and instead of of showing you a boring preview and kind of useless, it will show you the proper preview with all uh, like if the the include were um, inflated in the right place. Um, next one is menu. So if you have an activity that, uh, that has a menu, by default that menu will not show up. Now what you can do is you can use the, um, the menu attribute to specify the name or the names, the comma separated list of name uh, names of uh, menu resources. So, for example, you might have um, settings uh, colon common, something like that. So you can have more more than one uh, menu inflated for you at design time. Uh, there's one caveat here: this does not work uh, when you use uh, an app compat theme, probably because there is no real uh, action bar because it's kind of a hacky way of doing it when you use an app compat theme. Um, next up is the action bar nav mode. Action bar nav mode is, as the name says, is supposed to preview the navigation mode that you're using for your uh, action bar. Now, action bar should tell you holo, because now in material, th the action bar is called app bar. So you think holo, hmm, does it work on, on newer versions? No, it doesn't. It only works on themes that are based on holo, so it's kind of irrelevant. Um, and it doesn't really do much if you're using anything else, app compat or uh, material themes as base, it will not work. Um, now, layout. Layout is kind of a it's a it's an easy to understand attribute, but there might be some confusion because at, uh, the layout attribute is seen as Android colon layout, tools colon layout, or unbound layout as well, depending on the context. We're just looking at tools colon layout. This is used by the IDE to preview um, the content, the 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 layout that is going to be inflated inside of a fragment. Uh, so if you add tools colon layout and specify a layout, then the ID will be able to show you a decent preview uh, of, the, of the actual UI you're going to see. Um, the mnemonics I usually use to, con to understand why this is tools colon layout and not something else is that uh, in an include, for example, the layout will be bound at compile time, um, but in a fragment, the fragment does not by definition, have a view until it's uh, inflated. And you can inflate something completely different because it's under your control. So I suppose that is the reason why they are using tools instead of uh, the unbound layout or uh, something else. Um, next on the list is the list attributes. So if you have a list view, and only a list view, uh, you can specify a header and the footer layout for your uh, for your preview it might be of limited uh, usefulness, especially the footer. Considering that the footer is always going to be at the bottom, of course, because it's a footer, but the list is never going to be able to show all the elements down to the footer, and you cannot scroll it in a preview, so it's completely pointless. Um, one thing has to be said, as you might see in the slides. There is an ID on the list. If you don't specify the ID on the list view, it will not work because reasons. I don't know. Um, 
But yeah, don't do like me. Don't spend half an hour trying to understand what you have done wrong and then realizing that it only works with an ID. It's not documented, but it's a thing. You need to do that. Uh, and you can specify the, the layout for the items as well. So in this case, let's just add uh, a few things. And you can see we have a header, we have a custom item view. But just for the first one, because for the others, this, there's the preview is still using the system uh, the default uh, item layout, but a different one than it was before because, again, reasons. Um, this is just to finish our roundup of the of the XML attributes that you can use. Um, I've written a couple of blog posts, and if, if you were wondering, yes, I recycled the title for this talk. Um, you can find them on Medium. Uh, the QR code is, is for the first one, but there's links in between the two. And if you don't like me, you can still go and look up the official documentation, uh, which is kind of okay, but it's not super complete. So you might want to have uh, some more information. Now. This was for XML, but I've said that there are uh, annotations that we can use in Java code as well. So let's move on to that and see the magic world of the support annotations. So the support annotation, uh, much, like, uh, much unlike the XML attributes, are actually part of the support library. They're not shipped inside of the SDK in and by itself. But the fact that they are uh, shipped inside of the um, support v4 dependency, it means that you probably have it already in your class path. Because if you're using app compat, which you should, then you have support v4 in your class path. And in, in turn, you have the uh, support annotations that come as a dependency of support v4. So you most likely already have them in your class path at this point. Now. The first type and the probably the most uh, relevant uh, kind of uh, support annotations uh, su support annotation that we have is the nullability uh, annotations. So there is two of them: null, uh, sorry, nullable, and non-null. Uh, what non-null means is quite easy to understand. So let's start from nullable. So in my code, I have added uh, at nullable annotation into the um, to to a parameter of my method. Uh, I can do it to fields. I can do it to return types, uh, to return values of methods as well. That still does the same. But here you can see that the IDE will actually complain about the fact that I'm explicitly saying I can take a null, and I'm not doing anything about it, and I'm just most likely going to run in, into a null pointer. Um, now, let's take one step back and pretend we have a different kind of, uh, of logic. Uh, again, really simple examples, to, just to make you understand the point. But in this case, we have annotated the parameter with a uh, non-null annotation, which is not the not-null annotation from JetBrains and the JSR. It's a different one that is specific to Android, but they are completely interoperable. So Android Studio is uh, smart enough to be, and IntelliJ are smart enough to be able to basically mix and match the two, and it will still work. Um, so in this case, uh, I have added the non-null annotation, and the ID will be smart enough to tell me, well, it, there's no point in doing that check, because really, that will never happen because you said this is not going to happen. So you can simplify your code. Um, another thing, another of the quotes that we had at the beginning was, yeah, resources ID are all plain integers. They don't mean anything in and, in and by themselves. They don't have any kind of type safety. So where the, where the support annotations come to help here, is with the resource ID annotations. These ones, there's basically one per each type of, uh, of resource. And what they allow you to do, so for example, in this case, assume this is a custom view, and we have our own uh, set main text color method, and we're passing a, a resource ID for a color. Well, the ID wouldn't know about it. And actually, 
by default is going to complain because it will assume that when you request a color, it's going to be the actual color, not the resource ID for it. Well, what we can do instead is just adding the color res annotation to the parameter. And at that point, the ID will know that, OK, it's fine. You're requesting a color uh, ID and not the actual color. Uh, as I said, there is one of these annotations for each kind of, uh, of resource. There's actually one more, which is the at any uh, resource, uh, at any res which means any resource ID. I don't know how many uh, users you can find for that, but it's still there and you can still use it. Now, um, we have uh, staying on the color side of things. The misunderstanding before was that the ID was thinking that we were passing a row color, but we were actually passing in the color ID. But the same goes on the other side. There could be a misunderstanding that I actually want a row color and someone is passing in a resource ID. Now, in this case, nothing and no one would be able to help us understand what is the problem. So what we can do in our method, in the parameter, we can notate it with a color int. This will tell the ID and lint that it should expect a row color. And then at that point, the ID will warn you that you're passing in the wrong kind of content. So you should do a get resources, get color on that before passing that in. Um, now, similar kind of annoyance you can have when you have uh, integers, floats, or arrays. There is no way of binding them to a certain range, right? Unless you uh, wrap them inside of classes that do this validation at, uh, at creation time. Um, Actually, if you use the support annotations, there is one uh, way which is quite intelligent of doing that. You can use for, um, uh, for values, you can use the uh, range annotations. There is int range and float range. They allow both to specify the start, uh, the minimum, and, the, and or the maximum. Um, with, the, um, with the float one, you can actually uh, see uh, inclusive, you can actually set inclusive or exclusive of, of the bounds. And in this, in this case, if you just apply that, well, the ID will be able to tell you this is the wrong, this is outside of the expected value. Um, and I mentioned arrays as well. Well, you can use the size annotation for array. Uh, you can say this array is supposed to have two elements or multiple of two or at least two something like that, you, two is any number. So you can, you can have a stronger contract in your, in your methods by just using the, the few annotations that we've seen so far. Next up, so I don't know if you've heard about the uh, intef vers versus uh, enums uh, debate that has been going on in the last few months. Um, basically, there's good reasons to use enums and there's good reasons not to, to use enums. If you don't use enums and you don't want to lose the type safety, you can use um, a type def annotation, which basically allows you to just define um, uh, another annotation uh, that is then going to be used inside of your main of your main code to say, oh, this integer is actually supposed to be of that kind and can have those values, and this also works for strings. Uh, and in that, in that case, if you use a value that is not correct, then the ID will be able to warn you. Um, next up, really quickly, uh, threading can be a problem. And if you want to specify that a method has to be called on a specific thread, then you can use the threading annotations. So for example, in this case, if you say this method is going to be called on a worker thread, because it's called from a service or something like that, or, or a background thread, then the ID will be able to tell you that you shouldn't touch views in there. And the other way around, of course. Um, there's four of them. UI thread, main thread, binder thread, and worker thread. Where worker thread is intuitive. UI thread is intuitive. Main thread is the main UI uh, thread, but you can, use, you can have a different UI thread for each window. 
you will never have to do that, most likely in your life, but you can. And bind the thread is the thread that does the inter-process binding, which, again, most likely never going to use it. Um, three other annotations, oh, sorry, three other annotations that you might have are the um, call super, that means you have to call the super uh, of this method, the um, check result, which means you have to take the result, the, the value I return you, and do something with it, is not just meant because of bad API design. It's there for a reason, and you can even suggest do this with it. And then there is the visible for testing annotation, that means this uh, field or whatever has got a wider scope than it should because I'm using it for testing. Now, that should never happen, but you never know. Um, next up is permissions. So with Marshmallow uh, especially, you might need to be very careful with the, uh, with the permissions that you call because you might have or not have permissions at run, run time and things like that. So what you might want to do, for example, in here I'm trying, I have a method that will start a Bluetooth scan. You want to annotate that method to say, this method is actually going to require this permission. And if you try to call it, uh, from an application that doesn't have that permission in the manifest, then the, the ID will tell you before you run the application, look, this is not going to work because you don't have that uh, permission. And last one, uh, which is really interesting, but unfortunately not really working yet, is the ProGuard one. Uh, last time I checked, last week, it was still not implemented. There's a pending change list, but it's not merged yet. So what this annotation is supposed to do is once you annotate classes or methods and whatnot, it's supposed to generate the ProGuard uh, rules for you at build time, which is quite convenient. So you don't have to go in there and change stuff when you refactor uh, and uh, when you maintain, you don't have to keep it in sync, which is quite nice. Now, if you want to have more information about uh, the support annotations, there's two places you can look at. One is on, um, on the Android developer's website, which is this one. And then there is another one, which is the tools website. Now, the tools website and the uh, Android developer's web pages kind of have the same content, but not really. And there's still a few dots that need to be linked together. So you might want to read both in case you have doubts, because there's, there might be some bit of information that is not available on one that is on the other one. So yeah, that was it for, uh, for the session. And now if you have any questions, just, uh, yeah, just ask. No questions. Good. <laughs>